Sri Radha Rasa Janiti Ki Jai, Prabhupada Saraswati Ki Jai. Actually, today is the uh, June 21st. And this is, a, we're continuing a class in verse number 40. And the subject, this verse, the uh, subject of this verse is Radha's Seva. Radha Seva eternally, yeah. Radha Seva eternally, or the Nitya Seva, Nitya Seva of Radharani. And I mentioned there's three points in this verse. One is that the verse itself glorifies Radha and Krishna, their qualities. And also it describes, that's one point. And the second point, how rare it is to attain the service of Radharani. And you see most spiritual movements, and even what to speak of entire sampradayas, their primary emphasis is on the service of Krishna. Radharani's, Radharani's not even there. Like in the Madv Madhva Sampradaya, they worship Udupi Krishna, maybe you've seen in South India. And their goal is to go to Vaikuntha, not Goloka Vrindavan. They want to go to Vaikuntha, the Madhvas, and worship Krishna and Dasiras as a servant. There's no coward boy idea, and there's no gopi idea. There's Rukmini, there's Krishna, he's married, uh, but we don't want to be his queens, he already has his queens, so we want to be his servants, house servants, or any type of servant, das, das, and or das. So that's the whole Madhva Sampradaya. And Ramanandis and the Sri Sampradaya, they want to attain the service in Dasiva of Sita and Ram, or Lakshmi Narayan. So Radha, and Radha Krishna Yugal, Upasana, the worship of Radha and Krishna together, and the attainment of Goloka Vrindavan and the Brijvasis and Brajavav as a coward boy or as a, in the mood of a mother, what to speak of Sakis, his lovers or the maidservants of the Sakis, handmaidens, the Mandris, Kinkaris. That's unique. It's unique and special to the Gaudiya Sampradaya. So this is, we should understand that somehow we stumbled into this by the causeless mercy of Bhagavan Gauranga, or born a few moments after his Leela 500 years ago. So, but in general, it's very rare to attain this fortune. So that's the second point. And the other point is that most of these verses are uh, crying for seva, hankering, desiring, and crying for the seva of Radharani and, and in a very beautiful way. First, defining the goal. The goal is what? Krishna. And qualities about Krishna. And why, he's, why he's worthy to attain and why he's, why he's worthy to strive for. And then Radharani, her qualities and their qualities together. And then praying that for the, somehow we'll get that fortune. So these are three points. We, we cover some. This is the verse. Tasya para rasasara vilasa Ananda Kanda Paramad Bhuta Somya Lakshmiya Brahma Adi Durga Magater Brishabhanu Jaya Kaikarnya Meva Mama Janmani Janmani Syat We cover this first line that Radharani is the Vilas Murti. She's the Vilas, the Madhurya Vilas, Madhurya Rasa Vilas, Madhurya Rasa Vilas Murti. She's the very form of Krishna's erotic bliss and enjoyment together. She's the ultimate. Uh, consort and the topmost of all Krishna's beloveds in Vrindavan. And Krishna is the Apara Rasasar. He's the Apara, the transcendental one. The Apara means no limit. He's an unlimited ocean of ras and uh, bliss and joy and ecstatic rapture. And he's the essence of all that. He's the essence of all that. So that, that Rasaraj meets with that Mahabhav Radharani. She's the Mahabhav Vilasmurti. And he's He's the Aparasasara. So when they come together, there's lots of uh, ecstatic bliss, inconceivable. So then the second line we're discussing, Ananda Kanda Paramadvuta Somya Lakshmiya. So this is where we're at. We're discussing about Paramanand and how Krishna is always blissful. He's the pinnacle of transcendental bliss. And the Vedas and Shrutis, they describe Krishna as Ananta, Ananta Anandam and Anandam Brahma Rupam, Brahma or Param Brahma, God, God is bliss, 
Why does anyone come to a spiritual movement? Because they want two things. Well, it could be three or four. <laughs> it's in the Bhagavad Gita, Chat Chatur Vida Bhajate Mam Jana Sukriti Narjuna. And in the uh, fourth chapter, Krishna himself is explaining, I'm God. And do you know different kind of people come to me? There's people like this and there's people like that. Some people come because they're poor and they want, they want some benefit. Some people come to me because they're miserable and they just want some mental peace and some relief. And some people are curious about what is God and some people are dead serious about realizing me. There's four types. So we can figure out which one we are. Maybe a combination of all four. <laughs> or poor. I mean, if we come to this comedy, we get rich, you know, if you're from an Indian village. <laughs> but generally, that aspect is not there in the spiritual movement. So the, the general, most people that are cultured and civilized and somewhat economically uh, okay, they approach God for peace and freedom from anxiety, which means happiness. What is happiness? It's the removal of distress. I'm distressed. I'm unhappy. So if, if God, somehow I'm trying happiness to get happiness this way or that way. And everyone knows that you can look around the world and see the unlimited varieties of ways in which people are trying to attain happiness. And maybe you or I also tried in those ways and weren't very successful. So we turn to God. So he's Paramananda, pinnacle of transcendental bliss, Paramananda. But... It's a big but. But without Radharani, then she's, she's the Vilas Murti. You may be, I, I'm very happy. It's like Krishna says, I'm, I'm the embodiment of happy, happiness. I'm Paramananda, Rupam. Ananda Brahma, Ananda, Ananda, what is it? Ananda Brahma Rupam. I'm the very form. Brahma means transcendence. And I, I, I am, tra I am transcendental bliss. But it, can you have a party of one person? I'm going to have a party. Oh, who's coming? Me. Anybody else? No? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> what kind of party is that? You're just going to look, you're going to hold a mirror in front of yourself, get a full length mirror, and look and dance around with the mirror. Oh, and then hug the mirror and whatever. What are you going to do? You're going to sit the mirror, you're going to sit the mirror next to you, you know, mirror, you know, mirror, you know. You're going to put it next to you on the couch, and you'll sit there and have a conversation. Well, what do you think of Australian cricket team? Oh, well, that, they're not that good. But sometimes in their own home field, they can play better. You know, but if they come to Delhi, we'll smash them. You know, so, <laughs> so you're having a conversation with a mirror. Obviously, it's ridiculous. It's a fool's proposal. So Krishna is thinking, he is bliss, but bliss has to extend itself, express itself, and take the... So his bliss, Krishna's unlimited ananda brahma rupa rupa he's the form but he's he's also according to the mayavadis he's, he's formless brahman he's a rup, near rupam he's formless but here this the shrutis are saying here that he's that he's uh, and then of course the lord brahma is saying he's the pinnacle of transcendental bliss paramananda so he he finds his fulfillment with radharani so radharani is that person that gives that vilas murti radha gives the bliss so now this line says, Ananda Kanda Paramat Bhutta Somya Lakshmiya. So Lakshmi has the word Lakshmi. Lakshmiya. Somya Lakshmi. This is uh, Somya. This word means uh, gentle, pleasant, delicate, Somya. It's a very common Indian name for a, a girl, Somya, feminine name. And uh, hopefully they live up to their namesake when they grow up and become pleasant and gentle. So Radha is the goddess of pleasant majesty or gentle beauty because she's pleasant, but then she's Lakshmi. So Lakshmi is opulence and wealth. So Radharani is, is the origin of all the Lakshmi Devis and queens and Dwarka. So she's the most fortunate and the most wealthy, but her greatest wealth is the wealth of her love. And this is Prem Vasibhut. Her Madhurya Prem, her Mahanakya, Madanaki Mahabhav, it actually controls Krishna. It doesn't control Krishna, it just, he wants to be with Radharani. You can say that if you want to be with someone and you want to please them and do whatever they want, you might say that they're controlling you, but actually they're not controlling you, love is controlling you. And love is not 
that man or that woman, but love is something that's generate, generated as a third integer or a third principle when the two come together. So Radharani's Mahabhav, although she's a sroop of it, it's so astounding that Krishna agrees to massage Radharani's feet and brush her hair and dress her and paint, paint designs on her face, or at least try to, and when he tries to paint her face with kasturi and musk and make little leaf leaves and little vines, make a little leaf, first make tilak, kamayantra tilak in the middle, then some little line like this, like a vine, and you, first you draw the line and then around the forehead, and then you draw, put little leaves on it, and then maybe make a, draw a little ma- makari. And then we had this discussion. I said, makari means female makara. And then the, the teacher was saying, it can be that, like Krishna's makara kundala, which is a type of dolphin. So it's a very, it's a Vedic dolphin. It looks, body, it's a fish, it has the body of a dolphin. Dolphin means like a porpoise, porpoise or a dolphin. But it has a nose like an elephant, <laughs> like a trunk of an elephant. And has teeth like an alligator. It's very extra- You must have seen pictures on the end of Krishna's flute. Sometimes they draw on the end of his flute. The flute will go up like this. So the fish is like this, and then you know, the fish is like this, and the, the top part of the fish has this nose. It looks like the trunk of an elephant goes up. And has long jaw like a barracuda. A barracuda, if you know what that is. It's a fish, long fish with big jaws. Yeah, not exactly, but anyway. It's an interesting character. So the Makari, so Radharani has the female Makari, because Makara, this, this fish, like Shiva rides on a bull, Krishna walks on his feet, Vishnu rides on Garud, and Brahma rides on a swan, and then Cupid, Kamadev, he rides on the fish. Because, you know, romantic dealings are often very fishy. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know because like if you look, you don't know where where you stand. Like if you stand at the water and look in the water, you can't see the fish. And once more they come up. So sometimes in a loving relationship, you don't know where you stand. <laughs> are you are you there? Or you're not there. <laughs> so he he's riding on this makara. He's that's the carrier, the wahan, the carrier for Cupid, makara. So then the female's makari. So that type of little dolphin. It, this paint, Krishna will paint on Radharani's cheeks. But makri also means spider, and it means spider web. So we had this long discussion. Everyone was rather astounded uh, in the class because we had never heard such a thing. And uh, because he said that, he was saying that the teacher was speaking in Bengali and was translating into English. And then, and then I, and I'm a little spontaneous, and so I said, spider web? <laughs> because I knew makri, all I knew makri was this. And it's, we, Krishna, the gopis or mandris, they draw a spider web. You know what a spider? You know a spider? They go along. There. They draw a spider web on Radharani's cheek, and he said, "Yes." I said, "Okay, well, it's, she, she certainly catches catches the honeybee." <laughs> when Madhusudan, sometimes the fly. I mean, <clears throat> the spider makes a web. We call it a web, uh, like not the net, but you know, not the website. <laughs> But or it's a website for spiders. It makes a web, and then the fly gets trapped in the sticky web because it's sticky. And then the spider runs out and has his, you know, bog or prasad. Probably bog, he doesn't offer. But so the, the Radharani puts his makari on her cheeks, the, the sucky's paint, and then this beautiful madhusudan. Madhusudan means a honeybee. So honeybees like to drink nectar from sweet flowers. So the golden lotus is a very beautiful flower. I've never seen it. I've read a lot about it. Very obviously, it's a beautiful golden yellow. That's always bright, attractive, brahminical, sattvic. And in the middle, it's, it's full of honey and nectar. So the honeybee likes to land there and drink the nectar. So when Madhusudan, of course, is a name for Krishna, Madhusudan Krishna, when he sees the golden lotus flower right on his face, he flies near it. And then he wants to land on it to get the nectar. And then he then he hovers above her face. So ooh, there's a spider web there, right on Radharani's cheek. And if I get too close, I get caught there. <laughs> but somehow or other, he can't. He's not a very. He can't, the taste of that honey is so sweet that he can't resist. So Krishna, Krishna's lips land on Radharani's cheek, 
and I got caught in that spider web drawn on her cheek. And then, and actually gets a lot of nectar also. <laughs> so this is, this is why, they, this is what we heard in the class, this is why they, they paint not only mockery, but muck, muck, because then when Krishna is dancing cheek to cheek with Radharani and Rasa dance, this is called cheek, then Krishna's makar is spinning and dancing with Radharani's makari. Uh, you know, this dolphin on her cheeks. Very sweet, very rasic, and it means nothing if you have no ras in your heart. And ras doesn't mean that, ras ultimately means you have to be in a level of bhava or prema. But in the beginning of the Bhagavat, in the first canto of Bhagavatam, it explains who is eligible, who is eligible to read the Srimad Bhagavatam. And it says the person must be rasika, bhavuvaka, bhavuvaka, rasika, and bhavuvaka. It means that he, Bhavavaka means he has some softness, he or she has some softness in their heart. It doesn't, you know, it's the first canto because the sages are gathered there and Shukamuni is explaining, uh, Nigama Kapatur, you know, there's a whole verse and it says, Rasika Bhavavaka, Rasika Bhavavaka, doesn't, on the highest end, the Rasika Vaishnava, Rasik Jana, is someone who's on Prema, he's so far on a devotional scale, he's on a level of prema and bhava and experiencing, actually experiencing rasas in, in this uh, re- eternal relationship with Radha and Krishna. That's ver- that person is very rare. People speak about ras and they describe ras and give classes on it and they, and they relish it to some extent, but they're, to really be a rasic, that's what it means. But in this case, it's the acharyas and the commentaries, they say that rasika bhavuvaka, bhavuvaka means bhav, that you, because there are many hard-hearted people in the world. There are many vicious, cruel people in the form of human beings. They're like tigers and animals and uh, sharks. and they're, they're ferocious people. So they, they, they cannot derive anything from the benefit. Uh, excuse me, from the Bhagavat, uh, Bhagavatam. So the Bhagavatam. And Rasika means one, one who appreciates the fine things in life. Like some people say, you know, you see some people, they wear a white shirt and black pants every day of their life. And every day they eat rice and dal and a chapati. So would you like any other food? No, no, I'm... So they're, they're, they're not very, they don't, they're very plain people. And they don't have any sense of, how to describe it, it's a little difficult. They don't have any sense of enjoying. Actually, rasika means that you have, you like to enjoy to some extent. Of course, it's, you know, it's mundane. You like to experience the rasas. Rasa means the taste, the pleasure of food, or a good mu- Oh, I like good music. Or I like- so usually cultured human beings, they have this sense of, of aesthetics. It's called aesthetics. That's why translators often translate the word ras, which is difficult, and they translate it as aesthetic, aesthetic rapture. Rapture means swooning in divine bliss or... You can swoon in fear, see some monster movie or something, oh, <laughs> and faint. Or the mother sees her son run over in front of him, and she faint, she'll faint because it's our Vatsalya Bhav, everything just, she's, oh. you know, So that's swooning, but not swooning in transcendental bliss. Or people can be in heights of ecstasy and, and intimate um, union, and one partner can faint, and you read about that also. So this is swooning, so this is rapture, aesthetic rapture. So therefore, people that have some, that's why some people don't make it in bhakti. They start, they come to devotional service, they start chanting and they read, and they just can't quite get it because their hearts are too tinged with impersonalism. And I know, I mean, I'm 40 years uh, trying to practice this uh, bhakti sadhana, and I've seen lots of people come and go. And I've inquired why you came and why you left. Because I, I, can't, I can't understand why you would leave. And because the Western people, they don't come for monetary benefit, like many others may do, uh, from ISKCON. So then they tell me, this, I, I couldn't quite get it. You know, this, this whole personalism and God as a person. I, had, I mean, I had the idea, but doesn't make sense, and whatever reason. So that, so this, when we hear descriptions like this, that, that can mean a lot to some and mean nothing to others. 
So Radharani is that Somya Lakshmi, that she's the goddess of pleasant majesty or gentle beauty. The Vaikuntha Lakshmis, the goddesses of fortune, in Vaikuntha, the, uh, she's famous for being chanchal or restless. Oh, this is nice. Generally, when you think of Lakshmi, I'm not looking at anybody. I look in this space sometimes to think about things. I'm sorry, that's one of my caricatures. <laughs> I can hear, like you can hear. Ta-da, someone's coming. <laughs> at any rate, Lakshmi, everyone's heard that Lakshmi is chancho. Chancho means restless. You have money today and maybe tomorrow, no money. Or you have a lot of money and it's stored somewhere and it's not there because someone takes it. So this is the nature of Lakshmi. She's a queen, she's a goddess, she's the wife of Narayan. She favors some and she doesn't favor others. But so Radharani, there's a qualifying word for Radharani. She's Lakshmi. She's the most opulent, majestic, fortunate, bestower of fortune for everyone, Radharani. But she's Somya. Somya means she's steady, she's gentle. You can always count on Radharani. She's She's there, she's Somya. So she's, this is described that she's, she's better than any of the Lakshmis because, of course, she's the origin of all the Lakshmis, but she's Somya. She's not restless. If somehow Radharani moves into your heart or you become attracted to the service of Radharani, she'll stay with you. But sometimes Lakshmi moves into your heart, or let's say moves into your pocketbook, and uh, she may not stay with you. Maybe for some years you're rich and then you're poor. I see it happen all the time. So Radharani, if she moves into her heart, she'll stay there. And she may, it may take you some time to realize it and to attain her full manifestation of her presence and her eternal service. But at least she'll never leave you. Lakshmi is fickle and chanchal. Like Krishna, <laughs> Krishna is also like that. But, so that makes it nice. Radharani, uh, she's not restless, but Krishna is. She's delicate, but Krishna is rough. Radharani tells the truth all the time. Krishna lies all the time. Radharani walks in a straight line. Krishna walks in a crooked line. Radharani stands very straightly and nicely, and Krishna's tribanga. She's like his head's like this. Hips are like this, legs are like that. Radharani always keeps her word. Okay, we'll meet in this Sankhite Kunj at 11.45 tonight, and I'll be there all my sakis and mantris. Yes, yes, I'll be there. So now 11.45 comes, and Sham is not there, and 12.45, then 1.45, 2, 3, 4, and then at 5.45 a.m., somebody arrives at the gate of the kunj. He looks something like Krishna. He's dark, blue complexion, swarthy complexion. But he has some red mark on his cheek and some black uh, cudgel on his lips. And he has some bites on his neck and some scratches here and there. And Radharani is, he didn't keep his word. He, he, he said, I'll be there, and he wasn't there. He came at the end of the Leela, Nishant Leela. It's Nisha Leela, then Nishant. He came at the end of Nisha Leela, which is the end of the nighttime Leela. And then, so this is an example of Krishna not keeping his word. Then the whole Leela unfolds from that. So this phrase is also that uh, Radharani is not restless. She is also Lakshmi. But uh, another word for Lakshmi is Shri. But Radharani's name is Jaya Shri. <laughs> because if that Shri, that fortunate goddess of fortune, Radharani, is in your mind and heart, and she is the goal of your sadhana, sadhana and the, the goal of your life and lifetimes and lifetimes to attain the Nitya Seva of Radharani, then everything will be victorious for you in all directions. Jai Shri, Jai Shri. But generally, we don't hear this about Lakshmi. No one's running around, Jai Shri, Jai Shri. 
They're saying Sri Lakshmi ki jai, Lakshmi Devi ki jai. Well, we say jai Sri. But Radharani is explained here, it's Paramadbhuta Somi Lakshmi. So Krishna Sananda Kanda Bhagavan ki jai. So that's the first part of the verse. These are like Yugopadas. Yugopada. Pada means the line of a verse. So one half of the, these first two verses, one half is Krishna, one half is Radharani. One half is, first one is Aparasasara Krishna, Vilasa Murti Radha, Ananda Kanda Bhagavan Krishna, Param Adbhuta Somya Lakshmi Radha. So the Acharyas are giving a breakdown of the words. So Radharani is, she's Lakshmi, but with two other attributes. She has two extra att attributes, means qualities, that Lakshmi does not have. And we mentioned one of them. One of them is Somya, which means not chanchal, not restless. She's, she's shunt, she's peaceful. She comes, she stays. But Lakshmi, oh, I feel, I'm so much wealthy. Oh. oh, I haven't seen you for so many months. What, what's happened? Oh, you don't know. You know, my business went down, everything's down. And I'm like, I'm flat, you know. Oh, yeah, I haven't seen you around. I haven't seen you in the club. It's, I, I don't have any money for membership. <laughs> so you get so poor. So, but Radharani has this quality of Somi, and the other one is Param Adbhut. Param Adbhut. She's amazing. Adbhut, amazing. Adbhut. She's Param. She's simply, unbelievably, extraordinarily amazing and transcendentally amazing. So Param Adbhut means Radha is... Unlike, unlike the Lakshmi and Vaikuntha, Radharani is Paramadbhut, most amazing and wonderful. Because Lakshmi Devi, of course, Lakshmi, you can use these adjectives to describe Lakshmi, oh, she's, a, she's amazing, she, but it, they, they, they never are. No one ever describes in any literature or Shastra that Lakshmi is Adbhut, <laughs> amazing. And uh, they may say she's Parama, Parama Sobhagya. They may, they may use this word parama because uh, it's parama adbhut. But they'll never say, they'll say she's parama sobhagya or like this, like she's very um, fortunate or whatever. Parama adbhut is said then, the charities are saying, why, why, why is Radharani called most amazing and wonderful? Because Radha, who is the Braj, who is Braja, she's the Prem Lakshmi, she's the Prem Lakshmi. Not the Paisa Lakshmi. There's Paisa Lakshmi and Prem Lakshmi. Paisa means rupees, rubles, dinero, marks, you know, whatever, whatever you have. So the most amazing, because she's full of sweetness, Madurima. Plus, Radharani is gentle and steady. Whereas the Vaikuntha Lakshmi is chancho, which means she sometimes favors someone by staying with them as wealth and opulence and money. And then later, to, due to her restless, fickle nature, Lakshmi Devi flees and runs away, and the man becomes bankrupt and loses all his money. Becomes poverty-stricken, garib, as they say in Hindi land. Egdam ati garib, fully flat. <laughs> so... However, if our Prem Lakshmi Radha comes into a devotee's heart, she will never leave. But Radha will stay forever, inspiring that Premi Bhakta with feelings of divine bliss and opportunities for her loving service. Parama so Paramad Bhutta Somya Prema Lakshmi Radha Rani Ki Jai. So these are very nice words to describe Radharani because it is Radha Ras Sudhaniti, ocean of nectar, of flavors about Radharani, Radharani's qualities, the guna ras, the flavor and happiness and joy of her qualities, her guna ras, her rupa ras, the amazing ras of her form and transcendental divine sweetness, and then her lila ras, and her vilas murti, and then, then her seva ras, Sevaras is also Sevaras, the bliss and joy of simply serving. Everyone knows. You see, at least you can see, uh, I have seen, you, you see someone serving and they're blissful. If you see a mother who loves her son or daughter and they're serving them, which they're doing all the time, they're actually very happy. 
And I, the most graphic example of that is to attend, to go to a function at some Indian person's house, cultured Indian, let's say traditional, and there are many people there in this program, because I've done many programs in Indian houses, Prabhachan programs, Kirtan. And afterwards they serve prasadam, oftentimes, oftentimes full meals to everyone. There may be 50, 60 guests in a person's house. And they go to so much trouble to serve the devotees and, the, and their friends and the Vaishnavas. They move all the furniture out of the biggest room. They move all the furniture out. And they move into some, they pile up everything in a bedroom, couches and chairs and everything, to make lots of space to serve the devotees and their and the other you know the, their friends. That's a big thing to begin with. And then they cook all day long. Several ladies will cook together. Then they serve out. And if you watch, if you watch the uh, housewives that are serving everyone, they're so blissful and they're so happy. And uh, the husband and wife that arranged the program. So this is a clear indication of there's so much joy and bliss in serving. And even when it's all said and done, everyone's eaten to their full satisfaction and more. <laughs> over over satisfaction. And gone on. And then there's nothing there left. Nothing. The children have eaten, the husband's eaten, everyone's eaten, the guests have all gone. Now there's not a there's not a morsel of food left, and what is that that hostess, that that wife that sponsored all this Vaishnav Pravachan Prasad distribution program? She goes in the kitchen, rolls up her sleeves or whatever, and then she starts washing all the dishes, singing. Inconceivable, because of the joy of her heart. We can't imagine because we're so selfish and cruel-minded and. Western people, they, they, this kind of softness of heart or self-sacrifice and service to others, which is, which is the basic foundation to serving Guru and God. Most people, at least I can speak for myself, we don't have it. At least I don't have it. You may have that strong seva nadi or seva dara in your heart, that strong current of seva. I've never really seen it so prominently until I came to India. It's very nice. I, another instance I'll tell you about, so there's so much joy and bliss in seva. So I've seen, like someone get some, some a group of men, a group of Indian young college students are, are uh, they're on prikama, let's say, go over on prikama, five, seven, ten maybe. And then uh, they stop somewhere to get something. So someone says, oh, everyone sit down. Everyone sit down, I'll, I'll collect something, I'll get something. So he goes to the counter and he buys a bunch of first he buys samosas, then he goes and he serves. He starts serving the a cup with a samosa to everyone, and then he goes around and gives it the chutney to everyone, and then then as there is even more, then he and they all take samosas, and then he so he wants some sweets and he gives them sweets, and then, and they're just uh, he's serving them all, and then they're done. Then he sits down and then he takes. This is just some college students, so this is the. Uh, what happens is Radharani, when she sees someone's heart, is softened so much soft because Radharani's heart is so soft it melts. Like butter is soft already and it has some firmness in the refrigerator. When you bring it out on a hot day or, or you put it in an oven, of course it melts. So Radharani's heart is already melted and so soft and it's always flowing to, the, to devotees. Devotees means servants. Those that serve the most get the most of Radharani's mercy. Those that serve the devotees most and serve Guru most and serve Vaishnavas, they get so much mercy from Radharani because she's the unlimited ocean of pure seva. And we always, this concept is so important to understand. That Radharani is so selfless and so surrendered to all of her friends. She's always thinking of everyone else. Even after she eats Krishna's remnants, she's honoring Krishna's prasadi pan or his morning breakfast or anything which she cooks. Then she says, "Oh, listen, you know, bring the devis in the in, over in Radhakund, and Tulsi Mantri is there. So make make a tiffin for them. Set aside some of Krishna's prasadi, and then she calls some some duties, some messengers. Oh, take this, take this to those those mantris. And she says, "Oh, 
Where is Vishaka? Oh, Vishaka is just coming. Acha. Vishaka, sit. Hey, Vishaka, bed. So she she makes sure everyone has, and you know, even sends out to the to the kunjas for those sevadasis that are arranging things over there. And then then she eats. And then when she's eating, even she saves some special remnants because it's it's an interesting point. Her sakis don't eat her remnants. Alita Vishaka, these sakis, the Ashta sakis, what I mean by her sakis, but her manjaris, so she's eating Krishna's remnants, then she's putting on, the, on another plate, she's putting on the side Krishna's remnants, the prasad, the Mahaprasad, which she takes, then it becomes Mahamaprasad, and she puts her Mahamaprasad aside for her manjaris, Tulsi manjari, Rupa manjari, Rati manjari, and all the other manjaris. So she, her mind, her heart is thinking of everyone from the, from, from the top, which means Krishna, all the way down to the dasi, anodasi, anodasi, anodasi. Radharani is thinking of serving them. So this is one of the, this is, there's a long list of spe special privileges and special um, rights or access or fortune, mercy of Radharani's maidservants. One is that they get Radharani's remnants. No one else ever gets, only the mandris, and they 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 they're fine with that. So this is this maha maha prasad of Radharani. Is. Can you imagine? So this is uh, Radharani is the Paramat Bhuta because she's so amazing and so wonderful that she stays with us. She accepts our service. She offers it to Krishna. She. We offer it to her. And then it says, okay, that's so beautiful. Radha Krishna has such beautiful exchanges and Radharani has such wonderful qualities. Paramat Bhutta, Somi Lakshmiya. She's Vilasa Murti. So far we heard that Radharani is Vilasa Murti and Paramat Bhutta, Somi Lakshmi. And we heard that Krishna is Aparasasar, Aparasasar and Ananda Kanda. Because when you're relishing so much Ras, naturally your bliss is unending. If you're a apara rasasar, and then it's an obviously a paramananda, ananda. Like ras, what is ras? Ras means taste. So if someone brings you all your favorite foods, all your favorite sabjis and, and savories and sweets, and you're eating them, then someone will say, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great. <laughs> How does it taste? Oh, this everything's great. This tastes so sweet, and this is so spicy, and just the way I like. And this is sweet and sour, and this is a little bitter, and and you know, I'm really relishing rust. And so you, you feel good. I feel blissful. <laughs> is there any more? This sweet rice is great. Is there any more? Yeah, so much. Take more. So this is the anand, ananda kanda of Krishna's <laughs> pararasasar. There's so much ras. So when Radha, when Krishna is with Radha ras. When he's with Radharas, Sudaniti, Radharani herself, her rupam, her form, her mahima, she's an ocean, and nidhi means ocean. She's an ocean of ra nectar ras. So when Krishna, when the Aparas is sar, when the essence of ras submerges into the ocean of ras, then what happens? It's like, I don't know what happens. It's like third world war or something. I don't know what. <laughs> There's a lot of ras going on here. <laughs> the, the Krishna Rasaraj, when he dives into the ocean of Radharas Sudhaniti, then he drinks nectar and he becomes Ananda Kanda Bhagavan Ki Jai. So now, who can attain this wonderful service of Paramad, Paramad Bhutta Somya Lakshmi Vilasamurti Radha Brahma can't attain it, Shiva can't attain it, Chatus Kumara can't attain it, Varuna, Indra, Vayu, Chandra, nobody can attain it. But but I can attain it? Yeah. <laughs> By the mercy of Garanga Mahaprabhu, Guru Kripa, Mahat Kripa. Then the next line is Brahmadi Durga Makater Brishubano Jaya. Brahmadi Durga Makater Brishubano Jaya. So this means that Durgama, Dur means difficult. Like we have Durga, Ma Durga. Ga means Gati. Param Gati means Ga means moving. Gamana. We say Krishna's Gamana Lila or 
Alanath Gamana. Lord Chaitanya, when Jagannath went sick and doesn't give darshan for two weeks, then he would go to Alanath in Pur, outside of Puri. And it was called Mahaprabhu's uh, Alanath Gamana Leela. Gamana means going, going, moving, going towards. So this is uh, Durgama means, Dur- Durga, Ma Durga means, Prabhupada said Durga means fortress, a fort, a heavy, heavily protected fort, an invincible fort. So this material world is Durga, it's very Ga. Dura means difficult, and Ga means to move, especially in the hot season. <laughs> it's very, can't move anywhere. But it's very difficult to move, so she's Durga. So Durgama means it's very difficult to attain. Durgama Kater, Brishabhano Jaya. Brishabhano Jaya. So it says, it is very difficult, Durgam, for the celestials, devas, beginning with Lord Brahma, to attain the goal of Radha's intimate seva. What to speak of attain the service of Kishore, Kishore, Kishoreju, the embodiment of Mahabhav and Madhura Ras. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 13 and 14, and Krishna's Bali Lila, describes how Brahma once offended Gopal by purloining, 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 or kidnapping his calves and boyfriends while Krishna was enjoying a picnic on the Amuna's bank. In this pastime, Lord Brahma, who is known as Jagat Pitamaha, Pita means father and Pitamaha means grandfather, so he's the, the granddaddy of the universe. He's the big daddy. Lord Brahma and Jagat Pitama. He became compl- this. He he has four heads, and Gopal has one. Remember, so he has four heads. He became, as you know, Brahma Vimohan Lila. He became completely bewildered by the Gopal's mystic potency. Thus, even the leader of all the devas, Brahmaadi, says Brahmaadi. Adi means beginning with or starting. Could not even understand Krishna's Poganda Lila. Krishna was a young boy when he was having this picnic. With all, it was the calves. He, he hadn't even sta- started taking out the cows yet. We have Brahmanda Ghat and this, this is Gokul Leela. I believe so. And Krishna was three, four years old. Poganda, Poganda age. Poganda is from uh, five years old to ten. So he was still with the calves. He hadn't started taking out cows. It says, go past to me. When Krishna turned six years old, then he was a big man. I'm six. I'm ready to take out the cows. Now, you may not think that means much because we, when we grew up in the city or we, we see people from there, at six years old, they can hardly tie their shoes. What to speak of, do anything. Practical. But in the village, everyone matures very fast. You know, a six-year-old girl becomes the mother for the baby. <laughs> Practically, the, I see I, I'm living in this village. The little, you see his little kid is about this high, maybe four or five, got a stick, and he's taking out these huge buffaloes and cows. Tap, tap, tap. And the, just the tail of the cow weighs more than the boy, you know. And she just goes, poop. <laughs> but somebody has the confidence, my, my father convinced me. That's the amazing thing. It's like the guru convinces us to do the impossible. You know, and then somehow we become convinced and we have faith in Guru and we become convinced and then we do impossible seva for his pleasure. So this little boy, he's going out behind the cows with his mother, and fa- or mo- mostly father, or maybe mother. And finally she says, okay, you're big, you've seen me do it. So I'm, now you, today you take out. Who, me? Yeah, you can do it. No, don't, no, it's okay, you're taking some candy. Go, go. He says, okay, uh, ha, ha. And then that bu- the, bu- the buffalo just stops here, or the cow. I'm not going anywhere. Who are you? You, who are you stupid kid. No, hey, I, 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 and he goes back, Mommy, she's not going. You know? <laughs> he says, no, no, you have to like, kind of tap on the backside. Tap. So then he goes, okay, tap. And, he, oh, and then she moves. So pretty soon, they're like five years old, and they're taking out these huge animals that weigh, you know, I don't know what, 500 kilos or something. So this is Krishna was only five, four or five years old, and Brahma took all his boyfriends. They're, they're, you know, they're, they're, you're, imagine you're eating samosa, He's saying, Krishna, Krishna is samosa is so nice. You know, my mother, Rohini, made such a nice samosa. Then Dao Balaram wants to offer it to Krishna. 
And then, and actually wasn't there that day, but anyway, some other coward boy wants to offer it. And then, uh, just when he goes to offer the samosa to Krishna's mouth, he disappeared. Because that was the display of the mystic power. Krishna said, okay. And he went, okay. Went, huh? Where's the samosa? Where's the coward boy? Where is all, where are all the coward boys? And he's like, poof. And it's like, you know, if I, if I had like mystic power, I could say, now disappear. Poof. And everybody disappears. And then, you, then you're lost in space somewhere. And I say, okay. And come back. So this is mystic. It's like tantra. So Brahma did that. He said, hey, I'm smart. You know, I'll watch, look what I can do. You've heard of mystic cities. A yogi has mystic city. Well, what about Brahma? He created a yogi. <laughs> so he doesn't have mystic city. I mean, come on. So then, then when Krishna says, okay, you want to show your mystic power, do you? Okay, well, I'll show you some of mine. So, so, and then Krishna said, Whew! I manifested all the coward boys from his body, looking all the same. And Brahma said, huh? I, I put them in a cave. So he went back to the cave, and they were all there. There was the green coward boy, and a red coward boy, and a blue one, yellow, all different colors, white, whitish red, gora rakta, sweta rakta, all different colors. Then he came back, and he said, oh, there's a green one, there's a red one, all different color complexions. And they went back. And then he came back again, and Krishna said, and then, and then Krishna was eat, just was eating with the boys. But then each boy and Krishna, they all expanded in the Vishnu Rupams. He said, this is really getting too much. <laughs> and he, they're all the four arms. Krishna, all the coward boys. And he said, there's thousands of Vishnus everywhere. What is this? <laughs> so finally he starts offering prayers. Samasrita ye parapalava plavam mahatpadam punya yesho murare Pavam budir vatsa param 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 vi param nitesham. And so many beautiful prayers in chapter 14 and 10th canto, Brahma Stuti. So this is the <laughs> Krishna's, very, that's Krishna, so Durgama. Brahma couldn't figure out Krishna's Poganda Leela. What to speak of Radharani's Madhurya Mai Leela with Krishna and Braj? Can't see it, can't fathom it. Can't, can't even understand what, what it is. So it's very difficult for Brahma. So le he's the leader of all the demigods. And Shiva only has one head. Well, of course, he has five also. And it's Pancha, Pancha, Pancha Mukh Shiva. So Shiva with his five heads, Brahma with his four heads, Dattatreya with his three heads. And how many heads do you want? Three, three heads, two heads are better than one. Three heads are better than one. Four heads are better than one. Five heads. Sometimes in some families, it's like that. There's five heads, and they all want to be the one. <laughs> they want to be in charge. You know, that's a big mess. So he says here, so then how could he possibly understand Krishna's Kishore, teenage pastimes with the Braja Gopis, and, and his Nikunja Bihar with Srimati Radharani? The answer is he can't. So Radharani Krishna's Rahasya Leela is uh, Radha and Krishna's Rahasya Leela and especially Radhika's intimate seva as, as a mandri, which is the param gati, is the most rare and difficult goal to achieve. So as I mentioned, this verse has three points. One of them being the uh, difficulty of attaining Radharani's service and the qualities of Radha and Krishna, and then the aspiration or prayer to attain that seva. I'm seeing that, that first we have two, two padas, two lines to describe how, who, are, who, who are we trying to attain, their beauty, their sweetness, their exchanges. That, that Aparasa Sara Sri Krishna, and that Vilasa Murti Radha, and that Ananda Kanda Sham, and that Somi Lakshmi Radhika. Then, oh, is and then, well, you know, they're very beautiful and they're very attractive and have such sweet, charming pastimes. And I, but then, but listen, it's very beautiful, yes, yes. Very, they sound very sweet and attractive, yes. But they're not easy to attain. That, that gati, that durgama gati, that's a durgama gati. It says, brahmadi durgama, durgama gati brishabhano jaya. To attain brishabhano nandini. It's very difficult. And that, that is the gati, that is, that is 
That's the Paramgati. You see, even in Gaudiya Vaishnavism, there are thousands and thousands of Gaudiya Vaishnavas. How many under, even understand that the goal of being a Gaudiya Vaishnava is to become a servant, a maid servant of Radharani? How many even understand? How many even heard about it? Practically none. If you mention about it, they, they kick you in the butt and say, you know, you're, you're off. But Lord Chaitanya came, he says, Raghunuga Prachara, there's a verse in Bhagavad Gita, Raghunuga Margi Prachara, he came to, this is talking about the purposes, maybe not Elila chapter 4 or so, it's talking about the, why Lord Chaitanya came. Yes, he came externally to broadcast the Sankirtan movement. There's internal, there's the, the internal and external causes. So that, that itself, we're, we're in a movement, we're in a sampradaya, we're in a religious uh, movement or philosophical, where our philosophy, our, our sadhya, the goal of, we're, yo, we're yogis, we're bhakti yogis, and our goal of our bhakti, our devotion is prema, prema for Radha and Krishna, and specifically to be a servant of Radharani and serving her relations, her, serving her and Krishna together. Yuga, it's called Radha Krishna Yuga Lopasana. Madhuri, we're called Madhuri Opasakas. We're worshipping the Madhuri Leela of Radha Krishna. But who knows? It's so rare to even know it. What to speak of attain it. So that, therefore, that's why then the concluding verse is praying. That, okay, it's very, very rare. Durgama, this Parangati of Radha Rani's service. You, you see, you can bring up this subject or discuss with many devotees. You would just ask them, what is the sadhya of Krishna consciousness? Sadhya means goal. Well, go back home, back to Godhead. That's, all, that's right, I guess. You can also say yes, of course. Uh, Krishna Prem, Prema Mahartaman, yes. But are we, are we trying to attain an entity? Are we trying to attain a place or a principle? Prem is a, is a principle. Are we trying to attain a principle or a place? Or are we trying to attain a person? <laughs> we're trying to attain Krishna Prem, which means we're trying, our goal is to attain Krishna and serve him with love in his abode of Vrindavan. And so that, you know, the refining it. Usually, and then, well, how will you serve Krishna? I don't know. All right, so, that, because, so when you st actually study the books, then you understand this is where the Gos Lord Chaitanya told the Goswami, explain all of our sadhana, explain all of our sadhya. I gave the, the gist of it, the outline, and they did. And they talk all about these things. Prabhupada Ananda wrote this book on the order of Lord Chaitanya to describe all about the Sakis' relationships with Krishna and their intimate leelas, and also to reveal, reveal many things about the mandris. So it's very Durgama to uh, attain. Nevertheless, so then first the author, Prabhupada Saraswati, who is one of Radharani's Asta Sakis, Tunga Vidya Saki, she's telling us this is a wonderful thing. It's Paramat Bhuta. It's amazing. It's a wonderful goal, a wonderful Parama. Parama Bhuta Sadhya, an amazing and wonderful, it's inconceivable to be born anywhere around the world as a conditioned soul and to think I'm going to be, I'm going, my final attainment is I'll have a Satchitananda form, I'll have a Satchitananda Siddhadeya, a spiritual form of a, of a coward boy or a, or, a, or a coward girl, a gopi, I'll be a gopi and I'll be a servant of Radharani. A gopi maid servant. It's a very it's an inconceivable thing. If you actually think about it, where I am and what I am, and what is my experience in this world. So then he's saying, "Yes, everyone, this is very difficult, but don't lose hope. If not, like one sadhu said, uh, he said, how do it go? Perfection surely you'll." Light will surely come. He said, just keep going. Something like that. I forget. The light will surely come. My friend he told me this quote. I forget. Slowly and steadily keep progressing in bhakti. Then eventually we'll attain the goal. So then in the last line it says, Kai karnya meva mama janmani janmani syat. It says, nevertheless, Sripad, which means the one who wrote this verse, he has hope. And everyone, this should be one of the things we have. We maybe don't have money, we don't have name or fame or followers or 
even friends in some cases. But of course, Guru is our greatest friend, and Krishna and our worshipful Lord and our deities or Takarjis. So there's also, we're surrounded by friends. But he's saying that the Asha Bandha, Asha Bandha, that means to have hope, be, be bound by hope. As Prabhupada used to say, hope against hope. It seems hopeless that such a fallen and conditioned soul as me can actually attain the Prem Seva of Radha Govinda Yugal and the Nikundras of Vrindavan. But it's possible. And that's why he says, Mama Janmani Janmani Sat, birth after birth. Which hope, Ashabanda, is the very life breath of all sincere devotees. This is our life breath. You know, breath? Ah, I'm alive. We have to think. What do we think? What should devotees think? I should think that yes, someday, I don't know when, I don't know how, I don't even know where, but I have strong hope against hope that I will attain that rarely attainable goal, Durga Makati, of Radha's maid service as her mandri. So then he concludes that line by saying, Prishubhanu Jaya. <laughs> jaya. Jaya means from Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam, that Sankirtan is victorious in all directions, victorious over our mind, victorious over our senses, victorious over everything and everyone. If we take up the Harinam Sankirtan, chanting of Krishna's name, then we'll, we'll be victorious. Everyone is defeated by an invincible enemy named death. Everyone is being attacked by death at every moment. You become, you become deathless. Amritya. We say Amrit. Amrit. Prem Amrita. So this Sankirtan is Amrit. It says, uh, Cheto Dharpana Marjana, Bhava Mahadavagni Nirvapanam, Shreya Kairava Chandrika, Vitaranam, Vidya Vada Jivanam, Anandam Bodhivardhanam, Anandam Bodhivardhanam, Pratipadam, Purnamrita, Purnamrita Swaranam, Purna Amrita Swaranam. It says, Purna Amrita Swaranam. From Vijayate Sri Krishna Sankirtanam. So, Porna Amrita Swadhanam. Swadhanam means to taste, Swadhanam. Porna means complete, full. And Amrit means nectar. But Amrit means Amritya. Mrityu means death. So, when we engage in Harinam Sankirtan and always chant in Krishna's name, then there's no death. We become deathless. So, that means you become victorious over the invincible enemy of death. So that's, that's the wonderful power of Sankirtan. So then this is Vrishabhana. We hear a Vrishabhana Nandini. The word Nandini means daughter. Vrishabhana Nandini Radharani Ki Jai. And then we hear about, but now we're hearing about Vrishabhana Jaya. Brahmadi Durga Makater Vrishabhana Jaya Kaikarnya Meva Mama Janmani Janmani Syat. O oh, Vrishabhano Nandini, O oh, daughter of Vrishabhano Maharaj, O oh, Radharani, O oh, Krunamai Radharani, O oh, Kishoriju, O oh, Shamaju. You are the daughter of Barsana's king Vrishabhano, and he's famous. What is Vrishabhano famous for? Everyone's famous for different things, like someone may be famous because they're an actor, and someone else may be famous because they're expert in cricket. Someone else may be famous. So Brishabhanu is famous for being kind and charitable. So Sripad, Prabhupada and the Saraswati, could have chosen any word to end this verse. Because Radharani has a thousand names and more. Ananta Rupam, Ananta Namam. She has so many names. So he said, Brishabhanu Jaya, I'm appealing to you. I have Ashabanda in you, Brishabhanu, because you're the daughter of a very kind and generous and charitable father. So generally, if your father is very kind and charitable, you may pick up that idea from him and be kind and charitable. Because children are very impressionable. They learn. The father takes in the temple and hands him five rupees and says, put this in the box. He puts it in the box. And the father hires a halwa, a cook, and he cooks a big pot of halwa, and they put it in the trunk, 
and they go somewhere and the father and mother serve out halava to poor people, some prasad. Then they say, tell the son, yes, come do this, it's nice. So then he gets some idea about this. And then they see, and he grows up, well, my father was very charitable and very kind and very, uh, so I want to do also. And I, I've seen myself that I, when I have some of my students and friends who be with me, and the, people generally pick up the qualities of those around them. They say that you take on the qualities of your surroundings. So, so they would see me go places, and they say, "Why you give? Why you give everywhere money here and there, everywhere, you know, <laughs> charity or whatever?" I said, "This is my habit, and it's also based on shastra, and it's also in Prabhupada's uh, life." In 1970, when Prabhupada was in 71, I believe, Prabhupada had a braj yatra with a handful of devotees like uh, Shamsundar and Malati and Gurudas and Yamuna Dasi and many of the great uh, senior devotees, of, uh, disciples of Prabhupada, great devotees of ISKCON. And they went around to Varsana and Nandagram and to Govardhan, maybe Radhakund, I don't know. But they went to Vrindavan and they were walking through Keshigat. And then Prabhupada stopped and he said, give us some money. And there were some beggars there. And there were some sadhus and beggars like you see everywhere. Oh, give them some money. Give them some donation. And uh, so there was one devotee there who was a big collector of money. He collects lots of money for, for the building of Maya Parma and Nama. He said, Prabhupada, they're just beggars. We should use the money for Krishna's service. You know, this money we shouldn't use. It's only for Krishna's service. And, and Prabhupada just looked at him like, you know, you stupid. <laughs> He said, you know, he said, these are, these are, Prabhupada just said, these are qualified recipients. And so then, he said, no, they, they, they deserve charity, you should give. So he was, oh. Because when we joined this guy, at least in the West, we thought, we wouldn't give anything to anybody. Because we thought, oh, it's all, everything has, everything's only for Krishna. So even Prabhupada taught the example, which is also in Shastra, who are suitable candidates for charity? Brahmins, sick people, poor people, etc. And someone is asking, someone is poor and asking for money. And you never should measure, calculate a person whether, oh, he's a Brahmin, he's asking me for some donation. But I, I don't like him. He, he's smoking a beedi, or I saw him smoking a beedi, or I saw him drinking tea. So he's not, he's, he's a bad Brahmin. Uh, no, this is a, 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 an offensive type of discrimination. If he's a Brahmin, and he's act, playing in the role of a Brahmin, dressed as a Brahmin, born as a Brahmin. He may have his personal habits, which you don't like or don't agree with, but it has nothing to do with the Shastra guiding principle. The Shastras don't say, you give a donation to a Brahmin, but make sure first that he doesn't drink coffee or tea, make sure he doesn't take bhang, make sure he's not stoned on bhang, like most of the Brahmins, uh, pandas, pandas are, and uh, make sure that, you know, this and that. It doesn't say anything like that. It said if he's a Brahmin, that's his right. Sad karma nipana vipro. Sad karma nipana vipro. That a, a Brahmin is nipon, expert in six activities. Yajan yajan, uh, patan patan, dan prat, pratigra. He's expert in receiving donations <laughs> and getting them. <laughs> and he's, ex, he's supposed to be expert in distributing donations and charity, pratigraha. Like you have that verse and nectar of instruction about love, priti lakshana, tadati pratigrinati, tadati pratigrinati bhunkte bojayate jeva, guyam akyati, akyati prichati sadguna priti lakshana. I think maybe you've heard of this verse in Upadesh Amrita. It's six, six symptoms of love. Generally, we know the, most everyone knows the English. Giving prasad, or at least we know receiving prasad. <laughs> Giving prasad to someone, receiving prasad, uh, inquir inquiring uh, confidentially and hearing from them, and giving dadati giving gifts, money, etc. So it says dadati pratigrinati. So dadati means don, giving, and pratigrinati means to receive. So that same word is there in the description of the sad karmas, the six activities of a Brahman. Patan, patan, yajan, yajan, dan, pratigraha. Uh, whatever, if that's correct pronunciation, but something like that. So Radharani, her father, Prashabhanu, is very charitable and kind, 
So Sripad is appealing. Oh, Radharani, I'm not, I don't want to call you Kishori, a beautiful, sweet, charming young Lali. I don't want to call you Radhika, the most worshipful person. I, I want to remind you of, of your father. Remember your father? And then that way, just like when Yashoda calls Krishna for lunch, Krishna, come, come, you must be hungry, you're playing so hard, come, take prasad. I used to, ah, forget it. Just keep, hey, your mother's calling. Sri Ramana says, Janani's calling you. Ah, forget it. Keep playing, keep playing. It's too much fun. I don't want to stop. So they keep playing. And then she, she gets, Lala, oh, come. And no success. So then she ca- tells you Rohini to go call. So then Rohini goes out. She says, see this, not this rascal, he won't come for, you know, won't come for Prasad, you call him. So then she says, oh, Hey, Nanda, Nanda Dulal. She, she, he, she just says, Hey, Lala, come. But then Rohini says, Hey, Nanda Dulal. Nanda Dulal means a cute, adorable, adorable, cute son of Nanda Maharaj. Nanda, Nanda Dulal. So then, and then, then first she says, Hey, Nanda Dulal. And then, then Subal says, Hey, look, hey, that's Rohini's calling you. Then she says, first she catches him and connects him with her, his father, Nanda Dulal, instead of Lala which means adorable boy, any adorable boy. And then she says, Nanda Maharaj is very hungry. He can't eat until he sees your beautiful lotus face. He won't eat. And then Sri then Sri Dhamma says, Hey, Nanda Baba is hungry. Now what are you going to do? Oh, yeah, better stop. Maybe he spanks me also. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> so then <laughs> Krishna then runs home to take. So that because the right vibration... The right name. So therefore, Sripad is, is saying this, because you'll see in all throughout the verses, so many names, Radhika, this, that, the other thing, Kishori. So here he's praying, oh, he's saying, oh, it's, it's really, Brishabhano Jaya, it's very difficult. I know that I am, I am totally unqualified. Let's see whether this guy comes back. I know I am totally unqualified and undeserving of you and of your eternal service. So I am prepared that, he says, okay, I'm Brishabhanu, oh, Brishabhanu, none of the, oh, son of that kind and charitable King Brishabhanu, I'm begging you, I'm praying to you, please be merciful to me. I know it's impossible to dream the impossible dream, they say, or to attain the impossible goal. And, but I have hope in you because you're Kuruna Mai. I have hope in you because you're known to be compassionate. That's one reason. And I have hope in you because I've seen other people have been successful by taking your shelter by chanting Radhe Radhe and just serving you, I've seen. And I have another hope, I have another, another cause of my hope, like someone said, why do you have so much hope? Why have hope because of this and that, whatever. So I have another cause of hope is because her father, Prashabana, the king of Barsana, he's very kind and charitable. Prashabana Nandini Ki Jai. So then he says, and, and what, and that, you know what goal I want? What is that Parangati? I, I don't want a big thing. I don't want to be the lord of a universe. I don't want to be the controller of thousands of people. Oh, I just want to be dasi, anu, dasi, 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 anu, rada, dasi. The servant of the servant of the servant of the servants of rada. Kaikarnyam. Kaikarnyam means kinkari. Ai nanda tanusha kinkaram. Kaikarnyam eva. Kaikarnyam eva mama janmani janmani syat. Is it okay? It's impossible, but I'm ready to wait birth after birth as Mahaprabhu prayed in the mood of Radharani. Hey Jagadish, Nadana Nadana Sundaram Kavitam Vaja Jagadish Kamiye Mama Janmani, same thing. Mama Janmani Janmani, what does it say here? Mama Janmani Janmani, Mama Janmani Janmani, Bhagavad Bhaktir Hoyte Kui Tai. I'll listen. I'm in Radhavab. I'm mad in separation from Sham. I'm Goranga in Gambira and I'm chanting Shikshastakam. I'm saying, Mama Janmani, that Bhagavan, Bhagavan Bhakti, Krishna Bhakti, Krishna praying, Krishna Seva, I'm, I'm ready to wait life after life, Mahaprabhu is saying. So now Sripad, on behalf of the Sadaka Mantris, he's saying, Mama Janmani Janmani Kaikarnyam, hey Somi Lakshmi, hey Brishabhana Jaya, Brishabhana Jaya, you're so kind and charitable, make me your maidservant, Kaikarnyam. Brishabhana Jaya Kaikarnyam. Then Eva man, Mama Janmani Janmani Syat. I pray that um, that 
I will become Radharani's kinkri, loving maidservant. <laughs> I have some abbreviation, I don't know what it means. B slash A F slash B <laughs> before, after and and whatever. I pray that I will become Radharani's kinkari, loving maidservant Manjri, Rishubana Jaya Kai Karnyam, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I already, as I took notes, I guess they're coming out without reading them. As Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was absorbed in Radha's Virha separation in Mahabhav, and he prays in verse 4 in the Shikshastakam, the Dhanam, the Janam, the Sundaram, Kavitamba, Jagadishakamaye, Mama Janmani Janmani, this is Mama Janmani Janmani, Bhagavad Bhaktir Hoitakitai. Radhika prays in the same way. In that verse, Mahaprabhu in Radha Bhav is saying, O Jagadish, O Sri Krishna, birth after birth, I don't want anything else. I don't want, no, not dhanam, not wealth, not janam. I don't want wealth, followers. I don't want men, I don't want women, I don't want kingdoms, I don't want pratishta, I don't want anything. Anything else but your eternal, pure, loving service. So similarly, the sadaka, when, he, when we, we're sadhakas, we're practitioners, when we're reading number, verse number 40 of Radharas Surinidhi, tasya pararasa saravilasa mortir, ananda kanda paramad bhuta somya lakshmiya, brahma adi durga makater brishabana jaya kaya karnya meva mama janmani janmani syat. When we read this verse, we will, rem we will remember Mahaprabhu's mood of virakti, virakti, complete detachment from everything enjoyable, Mahaprabhu in verse 4 of Shikshastakam, he's showing a mood of virakti, means detachment, vairagi. He's completely detached from everything which is enjoyable and attractive in the material world, as expressed in that verse. And he's sincerely praying, O Brishabhano Nandini Radha, O Karunamayi Radha, please may I become your kinkari, birth after birth. Brishabhano Jaya Kai Karnyam Eva Janmani Janmani Syat. Ananda Kanda Rasarat Bhagavan Rasarat Sri Krishna Ki Jai Rasavilasa Murtiman Rasavilasa Murtiman Srimati Radharani Ki Jai So there's a Bengali song to uh, summarize this contents of the verse which is very beautiful we don't know so well but we'd like to read it because it, it's been included in the commentary Devote, contemporary devotee Haripad Shila, one professor who was a great devotee, Bengali. He lived about 50 years ago. Radhara Katakshapate Sata Sata Saragate Murachita Nagarand. Oh, excuse me, that, that was the one we did the other day. Excuse me. He sings, Aparara Sara Sar, Shila Brajendra Kumar, Vilasa Murti Murati Radharani, Sokishi Paramananda. Padapera Mulakanda, Adabhuta, Adabhuta. This is a Bengali saying, instead of saying Adbhuta, they say Adabhuta. Adabhuta Rasa Chintamani, Radhikara Dasyanand, Rupaguna Lila Vrinda, Brahmadira Ativa Durgama, Heno Radha Madishwari, Heno Radha Madishwari, Prishabhana Sukumari, Janami Janami Nivedan, Radhara Kinkari Hohiya, Nibritti Nikunja Jaya, Bajo Mui Radhara Charan, Bane Bane Shri Prabodananda, Shri Banukula Chand, E Vancha Koro Puran. In this in this verse there's five wonderful names of Radha and two wonderful names of Krishna. Rasarasar and Brajenda Kumar. Rasarasar Brajenda Kumar. That's two beautiful names of Krishna. And then there's five of Radharani. Vilas Murti Vilas Murati Radharani. Adabhuta Rasachintamani Radha. Uh, Radhi, then there's uh, Madish there's Ishvari Radha, Prishubanu uh, and Sukumari. And Banukul. Banukul Chand. Banukul Chand. And then uh, the Mandris are also there. This uh, so the translation is that Sri uh, Brajendra Kumar, the Prince of Braj, is the essence of unlimited relish, and Radharani is the form of his pastimes. 
Radha is the root of the tree of topmost bliss and the wonderful Chintamani gem of Ras. Arabhuta, Rasa Chintamani. The bliss of Radhika Seva, her forms and Radha's qualities and pastimes are totally inaccessible to Lord Brahma and other devotees in a passive mood. Birth after birth, I pray to the tender daughter of Maharaj Prashabhanu, my mistress, Sri Radha, Prashabhanu Sukumari, instead of Somya, Lakshmi, then that Somya word became Sukumari. Not Bengali, Su, you can imagine Bengali, Sukumari, <laughs> Sukumari. They, all these Ku and Su, they like too much. Sukumari, Kumari. Then being Radha's maidservant, I will go to the secret Kunja and serve her lotus feet. Prabhupada the Saraswati says, O Muna Brishabhano's dynasty, please fulfill that desire. Banakul Chand. Kula means family, like we say Gurukul. Gurukul means the, the school of, the family of the Guru. All the, the child, usually the Guru is married, he's a Rishi or a sage, Raja Rishi. And then, or he's a Rishi, and then he gets married and he has an ashram somewhere in the forest and his wife and he or he's teaching and the wife is taking care of the young Guru Kul students to a certain age and she's brushing their hair and bathing them. And the Shastras say then when the, the boys reach the age of seven or eight or so, then she stops doing that and and then they of course take care of themselves. There's a, there's laws. So that that's the um the Kula. So this is Banu Kul means the family of Brishabanu, her father, and she's the Chand. Chanda means Chandra. She's the moon. She's a shining moon. Like there's so many stars. So each, each star in the sky represents a member of the family. So there, but there's no moon, then the stars in the sky are very significant and prominent and brilliant. But when the moon comes, then the stars all, they're shy. Because Chandra's male and the stars are female. <laughs> the star, what's the name of the stars? Anurad, Anurada, Chitra, uh, Vishaka. Uh, Shatabisha, Pushya, Mrigashirsh, uh, Hasta, uh, Danishta. Sounds like Sakis too, but these are the names of the stars. 27 nakshatras and they're all female. And they're all the wives of Chandra. So when they're all shining, oh, look look at us. Just, I'm Danishta, I'm Anuradha, I'm, I'm uh, Mrigashirsh, I'm Hasta, I'm, uh, I'm Pushya, I'm Shatabish, I'm Falguni. <laughs> I'm Purva Falguni, I'm Purva Shada, and I'm, I'm Kritika. My name is Kritika, and my name is uh, Mula, my name is Maga, and uh, my name is, is uh, what's that? Barney, my name is Barney. <laughs> and, and these are all the stars, and then they're shining, and then their husband comes, and, ooh, and they become shy. And then Chandra rises, and they all, you can't see because they all put their. Because a woman's shining when her, when her face is uncovered. You see the shiny face. Oh, but then she goes like this. So when the husband, so all the, all the stars are opening their face and showing so bright and illuminating. The, but as soon as the moon comes, stars are still there. But then they, all, this, all the nakshatras, the 27 wives of Chandra, which are stars, female, they put their, their dopata like this, and then, they, then you can't see their light. And then you just see the moon. So this is Radharani. She's Banu, Banu Kul Chand. She's that shining moon. All the stars, all the stars. I'm Brishabanu. I'm Chandrabanu. I'm Subanu. Because these are the brothers of, of uh, Banu Maharaj. She has five brothers, like Nanda has five brothers. Subana, Chandrabanu, uh, Virabanu, uh, something like this. So then they're, and then all their relatives and Parjanya, etc., they're shining. But then when Radharani, she's the great moon in their dynasty. When she comes in, they. Jai Radhe, Jai Chi Radhe. So this is a very beautiful name for Radharani. So we'll, uh, that's the end of the class. There's a few minutes for questions. So much. Braja Raj, like unlimited. I mean, my books are all clean and they're just covered with dust. Because it go, goes there and comes down. <laughs> Probably on your head, too. <laughs> questions? Yes. Krishna gets pleasure from two things, two main Krishna gets pleasure from gopis. Yeah. And, uh, from everything. <laughs> from everything and everywhere. Thank you.
question uh, that uh, you know our mood actually also is um, how many symptomatic is you know patients and so on also very you know matched matched with the uh, mood I think of uh, generally but uh, our chair is like more concerned about you know uh, and we have like no information uh, about it. another thing like, of uh, so my question is like, like so the question is why if you want to be a, a mandri of Chandravali, you want to know how to do that I don't know what is <laughs> yeah <coughs> <I think. laughs> well Chandravali actually when it, when it, when it's all said and done, Chandravali and all the Sakis are actually expansions of Radharani. They're, n they're not different from Radharani. She's the original, she's the Ladhani Shakti, and she expands herself into all the Sakis, called Kaya Vyua of Radha. So Radharani, it's like, if you're, if you're uh, like a, a, an invincible hero, a, a, a fighter, and you say, every time I fight somebody, I knock them out. So I, I, have, I, I want to find someone that can really give me a good fight. So then you say, oh, I'll just make my, another one of me. So he makes one of me. So now, now but he's actually, actually more powerful than me. So, so I, we fight, and once I knock, and then he knocks. So then Radharani, she wanted to create a rival, and a rival party. So she, made, she expanded into Chandravali, and Shaivya, and uh, Padma, and all these others. Chandravali has Astrasakis, and they have their Astrasakis, and they have their Ast Manjri, so many. But uh, we're... If you, they, I can't say, but, <laughs> but all, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is Radha and Krishna, not Chandravali and Krishna. And he's not Lalita and Krishna. We are Gaudiya Vaishnavas, and we're worshipping and following. And as far as we just want to serve Radharani, no, we're serving Radharani, but actually our, we're called Yugal Upasanas, Upasikas. Yugal means we're worshipping Radha and Krishna together. Not Krishna alone, like so many, but we're worshipping Radha and Krishna together. I follow. So, like, we do so many services for Radha, but, like, Radharani's greatest happiness is not in me massaging her feet when she's tired from the rasa dance, which maybe I'll do, you know, on Guru Saki's Agya, or by her wish, or Rupa Mandri's command, and Siddha, and Siddha Vasta. And Siddha Vasta, maybe I have that seva that I'll massage Radharani's feet. But the greatest pleasure is when I bring, when I act as a duty or a messenger, and go and, and, and Radharani saying, where is Krishna? And then I find out that Krishna has been, he's in another, he's been caught by Chandravali and went to her kunja. So then I very cleverly make, very cleverly I, I write a message. This is in the afternoon, Leela. He's supposed to be a Radhakun with my Swamini Radha. But Krishna's gone off to, to uh, Gauri Kund to be with Chandravali. He was on his, he was waylaid on the road. He was kidnapped. You know, kidnapped? So he was <laughs> kidnapped by Padma and those Sakis, and he was taken there. And so he couldn't meet with Radharani, so Radharani's crying. So then Manjri says, no, don't, don't wait, I'm very clever. So, she, so the Manjri goes, she's like a combination of James Bond, James Bond and uh, Fed Express, you know. So Fed Express, or, you know, UPS. She's, James Bond means she knows how surveillance and intrigue and spying, spying, like I spy or KGB or whatever you have, CIA. And then, but then she's an expert messenger. She, you know, if you she guarantee delivery, you, you you give her a you give her a letter, you guarantee you'll get delivery. The same same night service. Not even it's that night service. Not overnight. Some overnight. No, it's that night. It's eleven thirty at night, and then Rad, Krishna hasn't showed up. And Radharani gives a message. Says, "Listen, bring Krishna." So she writes this message. Tell Manjri says, "Okay, I have this message." That Manjri will bring that night. So now the Manjri goes in the afternoon, when Krishna is supposed to be at Radhakund. She goes and she sees Acha. She, she's hiding in the Kunja. You know, there's so many other, there's so many other Padma and Vai, they're guarding the Kunja where Krishna is with Radharani. And they're looking out for Manjris. And they're looking out for Radharani's Manjris and Sakis. So there's so much, you know, fun in, the, in being a Manjri because you have to be like, you know, kind of like, you know, green beret type. You know, you have to, you know, you have to wear camouflage. You have to wear like green and brown color, you know, sari and stuff that little botches on. You know, you can sneak through the, sneak through the underbrush, <laughs> like you know, army fatigues. No, whatever. But so they, they use yoga maya. So you have to come very close, and so no one can see you. 
and they can't smell your fragrance because on your body is carrying the fragrance of Radharani. And the rival party go, hey, friend or foe, I smell, I smell the blood, of, I smell the fragrance of Radharani. <laughs> Who is this? So then they, so they have to sneak through the, through the enemy lines and they say, oh, there's Krishna. So then somehow I have to get his attention. So then she, she writes a message on a, on a lotus petal with some kunkum. She takes some kunkum and she writes a message. Sham, you're late. Piyarju is, is waiting. Make an excuse, come. And she, so she has a lotus like this, right? The lotus has so many petals. So she very gently opens one and she writes a message on the lotus petal. You know lotus? And then she, and then, so, the, so Manjuri's has to be expert spies. They have to be expert in baseball. There so many things. And then she takes the flower and she looks for an opening in the kunja and she throws. And it, ju- it goes up into the tree and it falls down and goes, tum. It's just like a flower falls from a tree because the kunjas, there's trees, and, there's kadama trees in four corners of the kunj and there's some thorn, thorn bushes between or it can be flowering, thorn bushes on the outside and the inside there's all flowering bushes so when the thor- thorn bushes are a natural impenetrable wall and many kinds of kunjas are described in Shastra. So the, the flower, flower message is like special packaging when you go to these courier wallows they put your thing in a special package. So then it lands there, and Krishna and Chandravali by that is somehow she's resting. Krishna sees this flower. He said, that's a lotus flower. And that's a kadamba tree. How did a lotus flower fall from a... You hear it, how did a How did a red lotus flower fall from a kadamba tree which has yellow, greeny, yellow flowers? Let me just look at this thing. And he smelled... This is Radharani. This is not this fragr- This lotus flower doesn't smell like a lotus. It smells like Radharani. It's, it's very suspicious. I better call some bomb experts. Some bomb experts to detonate it. Maybe it's a bomb. <laughs> Blow up my kunj. So then Krishna, very careful, he looks around and he finds one petal and he just opens it like this. Sees a message. And he takes that message and he puts it, that petal and he puts it in his turban. So then, at, then, then he wakes up Chandrava and he says, Oh, you know, I thought we would spend the whole afternoon here <clears throat> in, 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 in rapturous bliss. But I just got a message. You know, I, I just got a message. From, you know, a parrot just came. While you were resting, one parrot came and told me that Kamsa is preparing to attack Nandagram with hundreds of soldiers and going to steal all of our cows. So you just wait here. I'll be right back. I just have to rush off to Nandagram and I'll be right back. Oh, okay. She's already half tired. So then Krishna, he goes outside the kunja. Psst, 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 psst. Krishna, sham, sham. Here, I'm over here. So then, then Manjari, Telsi Manjari says, come, come. I sent that message. Yes, come, come. So then, very fast, they run, and Manjari knows, because Krishna said, no, I go, I go this way. He said, no, no, that's the long way. I know the shortcut. Because Manjari's are very good at navigation. They don't, they, it's like you, you don't, they don't have any GPS system or no GPS guidance system. They just have RPS, you know, you know, Rad, Radharani, you know, global positioning. Radharani Kuncha positioning, RK, RKP system. <laughs> they have RKP navigation system, Radharani, you know, uh, Kuncha position. So you know exactly, exactly where Radharani is and what his position is. So Krishna, no, no, this is the way. I go this way, then turn right. No, no, I know, I know a short. Come. And the Manjri, you know, she reaches back. Come, come. And she grabs Krishna. Come this way. Follow me. And she goes like, she goes like a rabbit. She runs so fast. And Krishna, you're going so fast. I can't keep up. Says, come on, you're supposed to be faster than the fastest. Like, <laughs> you know, a true crime. You took three steps and covered the universe. And you can't even reach Radharani with a thousand steps. So then Krishna runs and look at his split full speed. And then he arrives. Then he, when, he, when Krishna gets there, and then he says, Radharani. And then he, and he goes like this. And he says, look what you're... And he takes... And he, now Radharani sees this little thing hanging from his turban. He says, Shum. And they talk and there's some preliminary chastisements and 
and alibis and excuses and many things going on. And finally, Krishna sits with Radharani. And then Radharani is you know, st just like stroking Krishna's hair with her fingers and is touching him like this. And she says, Sham, she said, and she takes out this this lotus petal, this white lotus petal, with it, and she says, Kun Kum written on it. I said, Sham, and, and she showed, she said, what is this? I said, oh, that's your mandri. She she came, and she very cleverly, she did like this and like that. Hacha? Oh, she's such a clever, brilliant mandri. Hey, mandri. Hey, Nava mandri. Nava Saki. New mandri. Calls her inside the kunj. When she's with Krishna, did you write this? Did did you write this message? And she says yes. Fantastic. Just come here. Put out your hand. So the Manjri puts out her hand. Run it, run it. Goes and puts in the Mahaprasadi pan that she got from Krishna. So this is how the Manjris are rewarded. It's like when you do good on Sankirtan. You know, you, number one book distributor, then you get like a plate of Mahaprasadam. <laughs> Yeah, you seem to be an interest in trauma. <laughs> they may be, I can't say, anybody can discuss anything. Your question is that maybe we're discussing Radha Krishna's Leela, Namrup Guna Leela, which is, of course, the goal of our lives. As Madhurya Pasikas, we worship Radha and Krishna Yugo. This is Lord Chaitanya was worshiping Radha and Krishna in a mood of, you know, he's Krishna. Lord Chaitanya is Krishna in Radha's Bhav and Radha's Kanti. And always thinking of Radha and Krishna and their pastimes and Lalita Mishaka, Ramananda Raya and Sridhamana, they're always assisting him. So we, we don't worry so much what others may be speaking about or may be teaching or following because we're in this Sampradaya and uh, we try to learn as much as we can about Lord Chaitanya's wonderful teachings of Anarpita, Trim, Karana, Yabhatirana, Kalo. This uh, wonderful teachings of Radha and Krishna. And that should be enough to keep us busy. And it's the sweetest flavor. There's nothing sweeter than worship of Radha and Krishna. Radhi, Radhi. Radha Rasamiti Ki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Radha Rani Go Radha Govinda Dev Ki Jai Shama Kunda Ki Jai Radha Kunda Ki Jai Purushottamadikat Mas Bratta Ki Jai Prabhupada Saraswati Ki Jai 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 Shri Radhe Shama